Hey guys, Matt with Bustle Knuckle here. We're pumped to be bringing you a brand new series called Rock Rod Garage. We're going to knock on the doors and head to the shops of some of the biggest name drivers in the sport of rock bouncing. So you can find out more about your favorite drivers and their rigs. On this episode, we're heading to Columbia, Tennessee to Keith Farms to talk to one of the biggest show-offs in the sport of rock bouncing and check out his stable of awesome John Deere themed off-road vehicles. I'm Richie Keith, this is my shop, and I'm a rock bouncer. Sitting here with Richie Keith. Richie Keith, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk with us. We have a few, few quick questions for you. What was your first rig that got you into off-road? Well, the very first rig, you know, we've rode four-wheelers and razors, you know, for a long time, and wheeling in the country was where we started. And I went out there one day, and I seen uh, Bobby Tanner, I seen the Jordan Tanner, all them out there. I said, that's gotta be cool. So I bought one on uh, eBay, a big old Jeep. That didn't do me no good at all. <laughs> I got that thing home and we beat on that thing just two or three times. And I said, all this is gonna do is get me further back in the woods. So two weeks later, I talked to Daryl Jones. And uh, so we started building Plyboy One. So that's how we sort of got into it. And that's been four and a half years ago, almost to the day. You've been to a bunch of different parks. Where is your, if you can only pick one, where's your favorite place to wheel? Well, if you, it's hard to pick one, but if I had to pick one, it ain't just the park, it's the hill and it's Cable Hill. <laughs> ain't nothing like Cable Hill. How many times have you been up Cable? I've been up probably eight or ten times and probably been denied half the time. And the last time was pretty rough being denied. Yeah. Well, the last time you made it up to the hill, you made it up the top of the hill. You were basically out of there and then had a steering issue and rolled it at the top. Yeah, we rolled it at the top. And then uh, then one after that is whenever we uh, flipped rolled, it and rolled, rolled down. And, that was uh, a pretty rough roll. That's probably one of the worst ones I've seen on Cable Hill. It just wouldn't quit, Matt. It just, it just, I've been slammed, I've been rolled but it's like you could hear every creak crack and it just kept slamming into that cage, you know, and it like never would quit and then it was just all over. And any injuries or anything from that particular role? We broke our collarbone, but, and that's one of the worst injuries I've had, but, uh, and it was self-inflicted. I could have been a little more safe that day, but I was sort of going with the flow, not what I should have been doing. So, uh, but no more. If I get in it, she's gonna be strapped down no matter what. That's right. And that's that's most of the reason that he's stepped his game up as far as it, it as far as safety goes. Uh, you see him with the, the new ISB seat, you see him with Hans device. I mean he's he's probably got more safety equipment in his rig than many of the other drivers uh, in the sport. When it comes to just being out there at a park, would you rather go to a park and race? Would you rather hit a bounty hill or would you rather just go out and trail ride? What's your favorite thing to do? Well, it's a little bit longer than that. I'm fifty one years old. I've only been this four years. I, 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 ain't, I don't have time to learn how to technical drive. So that throws the racing out. Uh, the, the bounty hills, I like it whenever you can jump, whenever you can get some air, you get some dirt. And, and there's a challenge there. Uh, trail riding, just take my thing. Yeah. Uh, a guy asked me the other day, hey, why would you go out there and crash for eight seconds? I said, well, it's like this. You can go out and trail ride for four hours and then you break your rig and put it on. Or you can go out there for eight seconds and break your rig and there's a video forever. That's right, so it's all about putting on a show. That's just what I like to do. You know, there's nothing wrong with trail riding. There's nothing wrong with none of it. It takes us all, you know, to, to, to enjoy this sport. But if I don't have that adrenaline rush, I, I just, it just ain't there for me. Well, we appreciate you putting on a good show for the cameras. Well, we try. One of the things that, I know personally um, from owning a rock monster myself is it takes a ton of preparation time to get ready for an event uh, and go race an event and come back and do it all the next week. Tell us about your typical week before a race. All right. Well, Matt, you know, with farming is what we do for a living. That has to come first. And there's certain times of year in the spring and then maybe in early fall, like, you know, now that we have to put that first. So during a typical ride or race, we, it'd be here Thursday evening. It'd be washed on Wednesday, 
Thursday be worked on, Friday be finished up at night. We're talking about come in from work, work on it. And some things get, you know, bypassed. Now, whenever we're not pushed, like December, January, February, we bring it in here, we take the wheels, tires off, we check everything, because we know when it comes spring, we're gonna rely on some of our maintenance uh, that we should have, that we that we done in the winter, hoping that it'll stay together. That's, that's one of the things that people don't realize about the sport is is you have to check every nut and bolt on these vehicles because they're just getting punished every time they take them out um, so it takes a lot of work and there's a lot of people that help on the sidelines to help get these rigs ready to go and get them all loaded up for the next event so if 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 there was if there was one person that really gets me there is, is my wife Deb you know and I'm trying, and she she knows where everything is at she knows where the parts are at she knows where Woodley's is at. She knows where Jimmy's is at. She knows them better than I do because she'll work in her schedule to get the part that we need and so we, we can get it on. We know Plowboy 2 is probably one of the baddest rigs in rock bouncing, but if you had to choose any other buggy, what buggy would you choose and why? Well, you know, Adam built, this is, I think, one of the best buggies out there put together. A little on the heavy side, but it's safety. But if I had to choose another buggy, it would be definitely my buddy Bobby Tanner's Screaming Blue. Durability, the name, I feel like a hero. I feel like Superman when I'm in Bobby's buggy. And but you've driven it. And I've driven it, I've trashed it, I've beat on it, I've, I've tore everything that you could tear up on. And, and he has mine. So, you know, Screaming Blue's it. I mean, I don't fit in there that well. We have uh, shirts behind me, coats behind me, and, uh, you know, one good example was I was going up Cable Hill one time and I was trying to push the gas down and Bob said, oh, ain't far enough. So he pulled the straps on down tighter. I kept pushing, pushing, pushing. He said, okay, you got it. I put my foot on the brake. And he said, you ain't gonna need that one. <laughs> and, uh, and as soon as we took off, we'd come around through there and he said, I'll shift for you too. And he said, whenever we got up there and you know, we, we, we made it to the top and had fun. And uh, Bob said, as soon as I seen you was in control, I shifted her. I said, Bobby, I didn't know I was ever in control. <laughs> But no, Screaming Blues, I mean, hands down, the toughest and baddest buggy out there. To the fans, uh, I really, when, I, when you say the word fans, I'm included. Because whenever I'm there, I'm a fan. So I don't really consider them, them, they're my fans, they're in there with me. I'm out there with them, you know. So we're there to watch each other, but we all drive differently. I'm not there to trail ride. I like to, I don't even like to try and bump it. <laughs> and Rush was one of those things that really surprised us, you know, on that hill. Me and Bobby talked about it and we said, we gotta jump it to get up there. And that didn't work out so well. But, you know, to the fans, some people uh, really like that. And, and I thank them for that. Uh, we wouldn't be where we are, wherever we are, uh, without you guys and what y'all do on the filming and the people that come to see us, because without them, this is all over with. Yeah. The dream is gone. That was probably the, the most air I've ever seen a rock bouncer get, ever. So was that, if you're looking at like, probably the top moment you've ever had in a rock bouncer, is that, is that on the top of the list or? That'd be on the top two or three. You know, I think that the, the backflip, uh, not so much the backflip itself, but for, uh, it even runs cold chills over me now. Uh, we had so many uh, people that was trying to talk me out of it. And, and Bobby was one of them. Yeah. And he said, just, just don't do it. You know, uh, just, just worry. You know, and it's always, I promise you, harder to watch than it is to do. You know, so the backflip, you know, it was really emotional uh, with them. Uh, but, it, it, and it's by far, I think, the, my favorite. The other one was sort of an uh, accident. Uh, shooting straight up there, you know, we didn't think it'd go straight up like that, um, but it was fun. It seems like that, that power is just like right on tap a lot quicker than a lot of other buggies too. It's, you know. it's, it's crazy. I mean, the motor's got so much torque that some people, you know, maybe look at it, you ain't gassing it. It's almost got too much Yeah. because it's either you know or go. And, and when I ran up there that day, I just ran up there fairly decent leveled out 
and then just burp the throttle. Next thing I know, I'm 15 feet in the air. Yeah. You know, wondering where did everybody go? Yeah. You know. One of the things that's, that's really interesting about Richie and kind of sets him apart from all the rest of the people in the sport is he's the, he did the first ever backflip in a rock bouncer, the first successful one ever. He has his old buggy was turned into an Ultra 4 car and he's raced in King of the Hammers with it. He also has a mega mud truck, uh, Flyboy Mud, Fly Boy right? Mud. and he does all these things. Uh, so uh, a question that a lot of people have is, why did you turn uh, Plowboy One, the original Rock Bouncer, into an Ultra 4 car instead of building a whole nother car just for Ultra 4 racing? Uh, what was the, the idea behind that? That's an easy one because I've been asking it a hundred times. There's so many quote fans, you know, of that buggy, and, and people have touched that buggy. They have uh, fixed it. They rolled it over. They've got sweat, blood, tears into it, and that's what I wanted to take. We could have built an Ultra Four car, then no problem. But that's not what we wanted to do. We want to go represent the rock bouncers in in that sport, uh, and it is turned into a buggy that has brought, I think, from the Ultra Four side safety awareness to our rock bouncing side. It's brought uh, suspension into, I believe, the rock bouncing side. So I think it's, it's, it's made its way going to that sport, changing it a little bit, and bringing it home to a rock bouncer. First time we brought it back this year from uh, King of the Hammers, it's set up there, wide open design. We put some fuel in it, and we went and raced it, and I won first, and Bobby won second. Yeah, yeah, it did extremely well. So the suspension and everything in that in that rig definitely, you know, definitely helps out on, on different courses. Exactly. Uh, as far as the mega truck goes, um, I know you were new to that. Uh, probably raced it uh, three, four times. Three, four times. Yeah. What's what's your thoughts on the the mega truck racing? The mega truck racing, I think, is until you get the mega truck, you ain't done nothing. The horsepower is unbelievable. The torque, the jumping, and I believe it'll make you a better rock crawler in another year or two, because I think it's coming to more jumping uh, in, 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 inside events or controlled tracks and stuff like that. We're, gonna, we're, we're building a track right now, uh, a test track for it. We're taking all the body off of it, and uh, we're gonna start running it more. We just haven't had the time. We built Plowboy 2, and that took a year and a half, so that took some away from it. I had a couple of hard crashes with it, you know, and I've never had one. And then all of a sudden jump in a 1600 horsepower, you know, blown engine and say, here you go. Yeah. You know, let her eat. Yeah, that's crazy for sure. All right, guys, as you know, I posted a picture on our Facebook page and the caption was, if you could ask Richie Keith, AKA Plowboy, any question, what would it be? And uh, we're gonna pick the top 10, roll through them real quick and see what Richie has to say. All right, the first one, have you ever ran a hill climbing competition and not ended up on the side or the roof? I don't even remember when I wasn't on my roof. Uh, I have, but it wasn't any fun. I've ran a few races and stuff and you gotta finesse it. Not that I wanna be on my roof, but if I'm not on two tires or one tire, it just don't seem to be any fun. All right, we know we've got Plowboy, Plowboy 2, and Plowboy Mud. Mike Clatt wants to know, will there ever be a plow girl? Uh, I've got a new grandson, Cohen, coming in December, and uh, I think Plow Baby would be a cool one. Yeah, you gonna build a little mini, mini never tractor? Know. Never know. <laughs> okay, this is a good one. Uh, Bobby Barnes wants to know, how big of changes and what were some that you had to make to your Plowboy 1 buggy to run King of the Hammers? versus SRS. Okay. Big things we had to change was uh, you had different, you had heights between your head and roof. You had tubing thickness. You had uh, to where your vents on your oils from your rear end transmission motor all would have uh, loops in them, catch tanks. Uh, they don't go for you know any oils on the ground out there. So those were the biggest ones, but we had to really beef up the suspension to more, you know, we went to triple bypasses and uh, that, that worked out a whole lot, re re really, really well. All right, this one is from Jeff Stone and he wants to know, did Wide Open Design install a special throttle setup in there that's on a switch? So it's just, 
either idle or wide open throttle, or does it have a regular gas pedal? It has a regular gas pedal, but it isn't very long. So uh, the throw on that thing ain't like a half inch. All right, here's another one that has to do with KOH from Rich North. Are you going to run KOH 2016? Uh, we're not sure yet. There's a lot of things that's coming up that we're looking to, to do uh, that might be a little out of the box that we normally do uh, with a mud truck. And so we're, we're trying to connect those together right now, but we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, this one's from Todd Seeger. If you could change any one thing on your buggy, what would it be and why? Any one thing and why? I, I wish the buggy weighed a little bit less, but... How much does it weigh? It weighs 5,040. But there was no way to lose weight and still feel comfortable that you're going to go home, you know, on it. So I wish it weighed a little bit less. I wouldn't change very little. If I built one tomorrow, I would probably just take it back to Adam and say, build me one for the most part like it. And just see where we could lighten it up some is all. When you got 900 something horsepower, what's a few more pounds, right? It is, it's just a few more pounds. Uh, but I think it gives you more uh, safety thoughts whenever you're gonna hit this, is this tube gonna bend? This one's done been rolled over on how many times? And we haven't been a bar back yet. That's awesome, tough buggy for sure. All right, this one's from Alex Zoltini. Do you air down? What air pressure do you run in your tires when you're racing? Well, that, that is an interesting question, because like right now, if we're doing a straight line shot, there is no air pressure in them. The rear, right, the rear on these right now have zero air, they don't have a bow stem in them. All they got is tire balls. The tire balls have 12 pounds, it gives you a flatter foot. The fronts is what you worry more about. Uh, if we're not hitting a sharp rock edges, then uh, I'll, I'll take them out. But if they do, somewhere four to five pounds, but the tire balls really help out from hurting rims or anything like that. All right, this one's from your buddy, Batmobile Will. Uh, the most important question, are you having fun in what you're doing? I went, when the fun quits, you'll know. Awesome. I'll, I'll never sell the buggies. I might part them out one day when I get real old, but I'm having a blast and uh, Bill Barrett is my hero. He's 15 years older than me. Yeah. And as long as he continues, then I know I've got 15 more years. That's right. So we appreciate you taking yes, time sir. out of your busy day. You're welcome, and uh, we'll see you on the trail. All right, sounds good, thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed the new show. I know we had a lot of fun doing it. Big thanks to Richie Keith for letting us come up there to his shop and uh, ask him a bunch of random questions. If there's any questions we you think we missed or stuff you'd like us to ask the next time around, be sure to leave it in the comment section below. Uh, if you want to get your hands on the new Plowboy tee we just came out with in the Bust the Knuckle store, you can click the link over here to this side. Uh, if you want to check out some of the awesome tech tips and how-to videos, if you want to build your own rock bouncer or off-road vehicle, that kind of stuff, Jake Berge's been doing some awesome ones over here. It's down here in the corner. And don't forget about the full Rock Rod episodes of races and action pack stuff it's right down here. And if you're not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe over here in this corner. And thanks for watching.